is a real exercise. Hello, everyone. I welcome you all connecting from everywhere in Europe and beyond. Welcome to this session on citizen engagement in our research and innovation missions. My name is Signe Rotso. I'm Deputy Director General of the European Commission for Research and Innovation Policy. I'm responsible, among other things, for citizen engagement in this policy area. I have the honour of moderating this one-hour session today, in which we are so happy to count on the presence of two commissioners who will be speaking uh, to you right away. I just note that this impressive high-level presence shows the importance the European Union attaches to the involvement of citizens in shaping its policies. Afterwards, we are going to have a panel discussion with very prominent speakers, but I will tell you more about it a bit later. And hold on, I will also be showing you a short video and asking you a couple of questions before the panel starts. But now, without any further introductory remarks, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you European Commissioner Maria Gabriel, responsible for an impressive portfolio covering innovation, research, culture, education and youth. Commissioner, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sine. Welcome. Welcome to all of you. First of all, I'm very glad to be there with the Vice President of Rutger Schroeder because we'll talk about citizens' engagement and believe me, that's one of the best persons that I know that, that can talk about this topic. So thank you very much, Dubravka, for being with us. I would like to thank our eminent participants because I can see some of very familiar faces. So we are in good hands with you. With you. Thank you very much for being with us today. So. I would like to start by again reminding us what are missions for me. Since the beginning, missions should be inspirational. Rallying efforts across the European Commission, what a good example that we are here with nine European Commissioners, creating a strong push across the science and innovation landscape and beyond to tackle major challenges societal challenges in Europe. So when we started this work, allow me just to, to tell you that one year ago, once the mission boards have been set, we knew at the beginning how important is to have our citizens with us, because we can't achieve results with these missions without the engagement, the idea, the potential and the vision of our citizens. That's why we need to continue this process of co-creating, co-designing together with you. Because above all, it's about trust. We can achieve different missions. We can show to our citizens that because we have taken actions at European level, it is possible, but at the basis, we need this trust. And trust, it's not something that we have for granted, that needs to be built. So that last month has shown how important it is to continue and to work together. So I'd like really to thank our mission boards because they met a lot of different citizens in different member states in order to take into consideration their ideas, their hopes, their expectations. And that's why this morning I was very proud to receive the draft of these final reports. And that's why this session is particularly important in order to see how their export proposals, thanks to our citizen engagement, can be translated into concrete actions. So one short message. You, all of you, you can be only part of the solution. We can identify together challenges, we can overcome difficulties, but only together with you we can solve problems and we can lay the ground for our vision. And it is a particular moment, joining forces to achieve specific targets which resonate with citizens at large, because that is key if you'd like to build a more resilient Europe. Empowering citizens, empowering people, will allow us to build a better union, a union closer to citizens that can support the required transitions, digital, green, 
energetic societal. And therefore, you have my full commitment towards engaging Europeans in the deployment and assessment of these missions. And I'm looking forward to hear from you about your ideas, how we will take this task forward. So now I have the, the pleasure to give the floor to the Vice President Shuritsa for Democracy and Demography, who is leading the work of the Commission on Deliberative Democracy and the Conference of the Future of Europe on giving people a say on how the European Union does and is run. Highly relevant for this debate. Dobravka, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Maria. Uh, first of all, let me thank you for invitation, and this is really a pleasure for me to participate in such an interesting uh, uh, mission or such an in interesting activity. So thank you for all your work and uh, for all, all your inspiration and for the idea. So, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, it is a real pleasure for me to join uh, you uh, the, as a part of the Research and Innovation Days. When I think uh, about research and innovation, I realize that we are limited only by our imaginations. There is so much we can aspire to. And uh, as a former mayor myself, I know all too well the importance of connecting with citizens. <sighs> In my role, as you, as you mentioned, my role as uh, first ever Commissioner or Vice President for Democracy and Demography, my, uh, my aspiration is for innovative tools to allow the European Union to connect and engage with people so we can improve our policy making to them, for them. An innovative tool is a conference on the future of Europe, which I believe has a key role to play in building a more effective, generally strong and healthier union. Through the conference on the future of Europe, we will listen, as you already said, deliberate and learn more about key issues close to the heart of Europeans. This new exercise in deliberative democracy is a first at the European level. The conference can help Europeans to feed their views into policy making at the heart of our European Union, but this is also the underlying principle of citizens' participation in the European Union missions, a key element of Horizon Europe, our next research and innovation program started in 2021. Horizon Europe's missions inspire us as an example of in-depth, meaningful debate that will increase the effectiveness of our funding and transform Europe into a greener, healthier, more resilient union. Citizens are increasingly demanding action in areas such as climate change and smart cities, soil and food, health, the fight against cancer, protecting our oceans, seas, coastal and inland waters. These are all close to people's hearts. Just like the Conference on the Future of Europe, the missions are an inclusive and deliberative process where Europeans can actually witness the power and influence of their contributions and views. If I may now say a few words about the profound transformation that Europe is going through. First, climate change and digitalization are key drivers. But this transformation is also driven by demographic change, and this will gain in prominence over the coming years. Demographic change is about people and their lives. Addressing demographic change is key to building a fairer and more resilient society. I work with my colleagues, commissioners, to ensure that our policies take account of the impact of demographic change. This is why it is necessary for us to adopt the Commission's first ever report on the impact of demographic change on 17th June this year. This report is an analysis that relies on hard evidence and comparable data at European Union and at regional level. It brings out major impacts of demographic change, such, such as economic growth, labor market, health and long-term care needs, and public finances, of course. I invite you to look at uh, this report and to visit our dedicated website. It is design, designed and intended to become a repository of European Union demographic intelligence. 
along with the green paper on aging, we publish a long-term vision for rural areas designed to help rural Europe meet challenges such as depopulation, connectivity, economic development, and limited access to services. Both reports are planned for adoption in 2021. The public uh, consultation for the long-term vision for rural areas is already online and it is available until the end of November. All stakeholders and citizens will have the opportunity to put forward their views for long-term vision through public debate on the role of and the future of rural areas, which is very important. Our work with rural areas takes into account examples like the concept of startup villages as a way to make rural areas more attractive to young generations to create jobs to repopulate those areas. The whole idea is to make the villages of the future smart and interconnected as well as empowered by using new technologies and social innovation to provide better services and offer a better quality of life. It is all about proposing and imagining innovative solutions at the local level. Uh, some more issues on rural areas. Uh, these rural areas in Europe, uh, they are facing major challenges. Families should not have to say goodbye to children who want to stay there in their rural area. Depopulation, centralization of public services, low connectivity. All of this creates a gap in opportunities and living conditions between urban and rural areas. With the right support and the help of digital and green transformation, rural communities can act. I know this because I have seen it in action. I think of the village of Villajos in Spain, in Castilla, Castilla y León, that has seen a steep decline in its population, especially its young people. But Villajos takes another approach. I visited it uh, in uh, February, I think. As a start-up village, Villajos has welcomed an Estonian vintage start-up. Villajos looks to the future. We are thinking of them in our work on the Conference of the Future of Europe and our work on demography. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear Commissioner, my task is to strengthen the links between people and democratic institutions which serve them to narrow the gap between expectations and reality. We must find different ways to get to know our citizens better, establish trust, establish solidarity. The Conference on the Future of Europe is an opportunity to connect with citizens. You know that democracy is having a hard time these days. People feel left behind. What do they blame? They blame democracy itself. But democracy is the best invention. There is nothing better. Still, we need to improve ways to respond to citizens' needs. We cannot solve new problems with outdated ways of looking at the world. Politics, as you said, is no longer business as usual. The Conference of the Future of Europe is a sign of new thinking at European level. It complements representative democracy and can increase trust, which you mentioned, trust in our democratic institutions. You said that keyword is trust. So trust, we have to help them to improve uh, all these democratic uh, activities in order to have trust in democratic institutions. At the beginning of the year, none, none of us could have imagined that those multiple effects of COVID-19 across the European Union this crisis shows the democracy and the institutions that underpin it have a key role in managing the crisis and recovery. We understand that citizens' trust in democracy cannot and should not be taken for granted, as you already said. I have been an elected representative at local, national, national and European level, so I know what I'm talking about. Citizens have been asking for greater participation in policy making. We must listen. It can help to reinforce democracy in the European Union. Now it's the time to put innovative tools to work for democracy and for citizens, starting with the Conference on the Future of Europe, but also with this mission and different activities like this. To be clear, the conference is not about one particular personality, about one particular institution, region or member state. The conference belongs to all of us. 
we want to encourage civil society, organizations and local authorities to hold their own debates and reflections and to feed them into the process. The research and innovative community will play an important role. With your forward-looking mindset, you can greatly contribute to make the Conference on the Future of Europe a success. But this process must be guided by the principles of inclusiveness and openness. It is of fundamental importance that all citizens are included. We will not leave anyone behind. I want to engage with those who did not usually engage with us, also with them. Using a mixture of physical, online and hybrid events, everyone will have the possibility to participate in the conference in an interactive way, including via a multilingual digital platform designed to be a one-stop shop for all information relating to the conference. We must ensure that we address the topics that matter the most to our citizens. As President for the line said last week in her speech on the State of Union, Issues such as health care and the Union's response to the public health crisis need to be urgently addressed and discussed. And this will not be uh, only discussion, but we have to see, we don't want to interfere in the member states' competencies, but still we think there is a lot of space to talk about health on, uh, also on a European level. Citizens must know that their voices are being heard and see the impact that their input can have on policy making in Union. This will be our benchmark for success. The European Commission committed to ensuring follow-up and I intend to see it through, which means that benchmark of this Conference of the Future of Europe will be feedback. So this time we have to come back to our citizens and tell them what to do with their ideas. You said concerns, hopes should be translated into concrete policies. In times of fake news or populism, our democracy needs an exercise in deliberative democracy. Active citizen participation should always come with critical thinking and deliberation, reflecting a broad range of views. The conference is not a cure, but it's a good start to reconnect with citizens. Dear participants, dear ladies and gentlemen, if we learn one lesson from COVID-19 uh, pandemic, let it be the importance of solidarity. Indeed, solidarity between generations must be one of the driving forces of Europe's recovery as set out in the Commission's proposals for repair and prepare for the next generation. The European Commission proposed a clear structured plan to lead, at, uh, to lead us out of crisis and into sustainable long-term economic growth based on green transition and digital transformation. The recently announced comprehensive package of European recovery with its budget of 1.85 trillion euros will help Europe recover and supports multiple European sectors as we emerge from the period, period of constraint. Major initiatives like Next Generation EU will boost the EU budget in the first crucial years of the recovery and contribute together with the reinforced budget from 2021 to 2027 to making, making it sustainable, inclusive and fair. Together, we will exit the crisis. I will end by reminding you of why we are having this discussion today during the Research and Innovation Days. It is to shape our future together for the current and next generations of Europeans, leaving no one behind. The Conference of the Future of Europe is an excellent opportunity to use innovative tools to bridge the gaps between citizens and democratic institutions that serve them. I have to mention children. They are our future and we are preparing a new comprehensive EU strategy for the rights of the child. This strategy will call for the active participation of children in the Union's democratic life, thereby strengthening the role of children in our Union present and future. Research and innovation must play a role in the conference and EU missions are a clear example. Let's be inspired by the bright ideas citizens have about the missions and Europe's future. Let's empower them to make their voices heard. 
I look forward to building this trust and solidarity with you. Thank you very much and sorry for maybe a long speech, but I thought I had to somehow uh, tell all what I'm working at uh, this moment. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Vice President, uh, Schweizer Commissioner Gabriel, it's been a real privilege to have you here in this session with us. Uh, uh, Vice President, uh, you clearly made it clear how all say the missions can contribute uh, to the Conference on the Future of Europe and the whole range of policy areas that the Commission uh, is doing. Commissioner Gabriel, thank you very much for your really uh, great support to the missions and also the importance, underlining the importance of citizen engagement in the missions. So many, many thanks for joining us and then we will continue with uh, this session. Okay. Now, as I promised you at the beginning, there will be a video and here the video comes. It presents testimonials from European Union citizens on their involvement in the missions. Let the video speak for itself. Participar en el proyecto Missions me ha permitido saber mucho más acerca de lo que la Unión Europea está llevando a cabo y también la manera que tengo de involucrarme en ello. It is very ambitious the fact that the European Union is looking for ways to improve the medical system in depth and apply these improvements across the Union. I found out how I as a citizen can help others at least by spreading information. Určite by som chcela a chcela by som byť súčasťou toho procesu, pretože ma zaujíma aj životné prostredie a jeho zlepšovanie. A rozhodne si myslím, že každý jeden človek má možnosť zmeniť to, ako sa vyvíja situácia. For me, it felt like Europe and Union actually cares I hope you all have enjoyed this short video. As I also promised you at the beginning, there would be uh, also a couple of questions for you to reply in the Slido interface. So, you will see the first question now. Do you think citizen engagement will bring added value to the EU agenda? You just answer yes or no. Wow. <laughs> We can see that overwhelmingly uh, those who voted have voted in favour of citizen engagement and its value to the EU agenda. So it's 85%, uh, 86%, 87% of the participants. Okay, now I think we can put the next question on Slido. In one or two words, what do you think citizens' views bring? I hope this works like that. Yes. <laughs> yes, holistic approach, accountability. Oh, wow. Oh, really, there are social impact, democracy, different perspective, relevance, connection, accountability. Well, thank you very much for your really excellent contribution to make this session livelier. Now, it's really high time we move to the panel that I mentioned to you at the beginning. We thought it would be interesting to exchange experiences on citizen engagement and mobilization and also to seek recommendations to the next stage. How to get citizens involved in missions delivery? Having citizens as part of the solution. Now you've seen what our audience today thinks about citizen engagement. Uh, well, many, many thanks for all your replies. They are coming, they are coming more and more. 
And uh, today we are really pleased to count uh, for this discussion on the participation, as I mentioned, uh, on four high-level and experienced speakers. They all have had a role, all say, in the citizen engagement and the missions. Uh, so I have a real pleasure to welcome uh, you today uh, to this panel. Uh, two of the uh, speakers are here uh, with me in the studio. So I'm happy to uh, welcome Pascal Lamy. Uh, you are currently chair of the mission board working on oceans. But you have held many high important positions uh, earlier. Among others, I could uh, just mention the one as director general of the World Trade Organization for eight years, a very demanding job. I'm, I, I know because I've been in the trade field myself before and also your manda mandate as European Commissioner for Trade. Uh, then in the studio, uh, we also have uh, the pleasure to have Anthony Sakazewski. Uh, you are the founder and the president of the Democratic Society, a non-governmental organization you created in order to develop new approaches to democratic governance that are better suited to our modern times. You also have experience in strategic roles in the UK central and local government. Uh, online, we have two speakers uh, who have joined the panel today. Uh, Maria Grasso de Carvalho, you are currently a member of the European Parliament, already for the second term. Uh, you have been twice a uh, minister in Portugal with science and innovation related portfolios. Uh, I cannot unfortunately mention all interesting positions you have held, but I would like to refer to your academic experience as a university professor. Uh, and then uh, the last speaker online is Katarina. Karina Altengruber, you are the president of uh, the European Youth Forum a platform of more than 100 national and international youth organizations who advocate for the rights of young people in Europe. Your experience in the Austrian National Youth Council is also relevant for the discussion today. So I welcome you all uh, for your participation uh, and uh, my intention now is to ask each one of you two questions. Uh, and uh, just uh, in order to keep to the time, I'd like you to spend uh, around two minutes and no more than three minutes for each question. That is five minutes for the two questions in combination. And my first question to all of you will relate to your experience in involving engaging with citizens in the missions. And my second question uh, will be seeking for your views and ideas on how citizen engagement should develop in the future, and also seeking for your recommendations. Uh, I will be starting with Pascal Lamy. Many thanks for joining us here in the studio. Uh, one contribution, uh, because now you've, uh, all the missions have had also citizen engagement events in different mem member states, and one contribution from Spanish citizens to ocean missions has been suggestion that children should start learning about ecology, water, healthy living, etc., as early as the fifth uh, grade at school. This would allow them to acknowledge the significant challenges faced. But now, how does it look like from the mission's perspective? How, uh, what has been your experience with citizens linked to the missions? Please, the floor is yours. We've, we've been working for the last year until today when we handed over our report on two streams. One was the work of this board, which I had the privilege to share with experts, with NGO representatives, uh, with people who have a deep knowledge of hydrosphere, oceans, rivers, lakes, and so on. And then another stream, which was with citizen engagement from the very beginning. So, until now, uh, we've had various events, all surveys, involving citizens in all Baltic countries, all Nordic countries, uh, Ireland, uh, Romania, Malta, which is quite a chunk, and more to come until the end of the year. 
uh, with uh, Spain, uh, France. We had one in Italy, which was also extremely successful. And the sort of proposal which you mentioned, which is put together a big education program for kids so that they get this connection is the reason why we choose the word starfish for our mission. Because we choose that word because we were told by the kids that this is something they love, they know it's in danger, they want to care about. So my main answer to your question is this is where we learned the most about this issue of emotional connection. Roughly speaking, people know about the atmosphere. They know we have a big problem with the atmosphere. They don't know we have a big problem with hydrospheres, but kids can help us getting there. This is one of the many contributions which we got. Well, excellent. Uh, Many thanks for sharing your experience uh, with citizen engagement so far. And I think it was really important that you mentioned emotional connection. Because what we're really uh, missing very often is emotional connection of the citizens to European policies, which are sometimes considered as too bureaucratic, too far away. But when we think about the mission areas, they are clearly something which is speaking to the people, it's speaking to their concerns. So many thanks for sharing this experience. Now my question, uh, second question to you is a bit um, uh, provocative, namely, why should policymakers at all engage with citizens? And how can we do it more and better? Well, the simple answer to that is that <laughs> policymakers should care about this if they want to be re-elected. It's an issue of the people understanding we have a big problem, working on solutions, and citizen engagement is one of the ways to do that, and then pushing in reasonably democratic systems uh, their leaders to move in this direction. It's, it's about public opinion, it's about activism, it's about filling this big arch which starts from knowledge, then goes to information, then goes to awareness, then goes to mobilization, then goes to action, and then goes to election. This is a very complex art, but on things like what we've been working on mission, whether it's soils, oceans, cancer, and so on, we need step by step to go through all the elements of this art so that the knowledge and the science we have at one day translates into political action. And this is what we have to do now. Reports which we've handed over today is great. We spent a great year working together on challenges and solutions. We know where we want to go by 2030. The main thing now starts, which is getting it done. Well, excellent. Many thanks uh, for sharing your views and experience uh, on that. And it's really important now to carry on. But as you mentioned, you've also learned from citizens, and not just from citizens, but also young citizens. Uh, they were the ones who actually guided you how to call your mission. Uh, that's why now I'd like to turn uh, to Karina Autengruber. Uh, and uh, could you uh, please tell us about your experience with citizens and the missions? And in your view, are young uh, people ready to join the missions? So, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for having me here today. Um, I would like to congratulate mission boards and also the colleagues in DG Research and Innovation for designing a process and engaging citizens in this process as well. This is, I think, also like a common framework that we are sharing because it's the mission of the European Youth Forum as well, like to engage with young people as well and, and, and to support uh, that we can live sustainable lives where our rights are being respected as well. So really like congratulations on, on this path forward. 
So the European Youth Forum has been engaging as well with, with the missions and we engage more than 100 young people coming both from national youth organisations but also international non-governmental youth organisations. And we also engaged um, young people who previously did not have any engagement um, experience in this process as well. And to give you an example, uh, on mission cancer, for example, we had a, a young person who is studying medicine engaged. We had a young person who previously um, was affected by cancer. And we also had a young person who is active in the youth organizations engaging with, with patients' rights. So we really managed to bring together different perspectives and different angles. And that's as well like so important when we're engaging with citizens as well, of bringing together these different perspectives as well, so we can have a positive impact in the lives of the affected groups as well. Um, we were also engaging on an online event on the topic of um, climate neutral and green cities. And here I also saw like coming many ideas in how we can improve our cities as well, like to become more green uh, and also like more sustainable um, for our lives. And here especially we have seen a lot of ideas affecting the local level as well. And I think this also shows the added value if we engage young people as well, like in local city councils, we can really address um, issues that are of concerns of young people as well. Um, so I think this would be a concrete way as well, like um, of how we could move um, forward here and create more engaging uh, areas for, for young people as well, where, can, where we can really um, have a say as well. Also, I think it's worth highlighting that the um, missions should not be only seen like as part of the missions themselves, but I think they can also have a broad engagement pot potential and really like inspire citizens to get them active as well uh, and to take what they've learned or what they've seen like through being engaged in the missions as well like to other processes as well. So I think it's, it's also like really an inspiring process that can transform other parts um, as well. Um, lastly, I would like to mention that I think paying specific attention to young people in this process has really like an added value as well, especially when we speak about topics such as climate or technology, because as young people, we will not only be affected um, by these areas most of our lives, uh, but we also have very progressive ideas on how we can advance in these areas as well. So I think we are now in a phase uh, if we can continue engaging young people in this process as well, we will also see like very positive uh, results and really can ensure that we are improving the lives of European citizens. Well, many, many, well, many, 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 many. Thanks, Karina, uh, for sharing uh, your thoughts. My question, uh, second question to you uh, is actually, uh, what in your view are the key elements, how to keep youngsters active on the mission related subjects. You gave a, uh, an example about uh, the cancer mission. Uh, I'd like to give another uh, example which comes from the city's missions uh, by the French people, namely, will the young people be ready for circular economy approach that employs reuse, repair, refurbishment and recycling? As this was one of the suggestions. suggestions. So I think now young people have the chance to provide inputs and ideas to the process so far, which is a very important step to involve young people from the very beginning. Now as a second step, we also need to ensure that young people are being part of the implementation. So they also see the added value of being engaged as well and also are able like, to seek the concrete results of when they're providing input, there's also a follow up. A concrete example could be here as well, that the course in Europe um, projects become as well like more accessible when it comes to, to funding. Often these processes are very burdensome, so it's very hard for, for youth organisations and young people like to engage and also apply for funding um, in this area. So I think this could be a concrete way as well of how we can continue as well like these, um, these engagements with, with young people. Um, and I think we can always look in different formats as well, like of how we are aiming to engage um, young people as well. And an ins inspirational uh, process could be as well, like to engage young people um, in labs as well, in order to um, find more solutions as well, like for the five missions. Um, and I think we also should not forget 
about the audiences that we were already involving so far in the process as well and keep them involved as well. I think an important aspect is as well here, a monitoring, so sharing what is happening with the ideas as well uh, and keeping as well like citizens informed in the processes. So I think we really need to think about engagement as a process and not only as a single intervention here as well. And I think if we can keep on engaging young people throughout the process as well, I'm also sure we will achieve the five missions. Well, many, many, many thanks, Karina, for sharing your experience and suggestions with us. And now I would like to turn to Anthony, Anthony Sakarzewski, who is with me uh, also in the studio. And first of all, could you also please tell about your experience and views uh, in working with citizens in the missions? So we were part of a process that brought together deliberative assemblies in 10 European countries, two on each of the missions, about 50 citizens spending a day together talking about strategic priorities, thinking through what the missions were going to achieve and trying to come up with their own vision for the future of this research programme. And I think a couple of things to say were first that it was done at quite short notice. You know, time is always pressing in these, on these, uh, these sorts of events. And we found a really great network of facilitators, participation organisers, democratic designers around Europe. You know, stronger network than we expected to find. But most of all, we found a hugely enthusiastic audience. You know, these were randomly selected citizens. They weren't people who had particular experience of any of the mission topics. They were people who were, you know, brought in off the streets. And the thing that really came across was how passionate they were, how much of an emotional connection they had. Not necessarily to a particular policy area, but actually to the process of being involved. And they were very enthusiastic and excited about being part of these kind of European conversations. They saw in it, I think, an opportunity to connect what is sometimes a distant and abstract European dialogue into something that was much more about the future of the places where they lived, the communities they lived in, and the people that they loved. Many, many thanks, Anthony. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad that it really worked out. Because when we planned uh, these citizen engagement events, clearly it was the time when COVID was not there yet. So you had to really rearrange them uh, and uh, make them also in the, uh, to work in this new environment. And I'm glad that it worked as you explained. But uh, you, uh, in the democratic uh, society and also with other networks, have been working uh, with these uh, kind of um, uh, deliberative democracy uh, before. What, in your view, are the success factors uh, that these European participative processes actually work? Because our intention is not only to have it in this research and innovation area, but also to multiply them across all policy areas. This was also that our commissioner and vice president uh, spoke at the beginning of this session about the intentions. So I think the, uh, one of the things that we learned from moving swiftly into an online mode from an offline mode is that a benefit we got from it was the flatness of the communication. It didn't feel like people were having to come, some from close by, some from far away, into a space that was controlled by the government or by an official body. It felt much more human because we could see into people's living rooms, we could see their backgrounds. And actually that, that for me was a real net benefit of going online. I think that as an experiment in these kind of processes, it demonstrated that it's absolutely possible to have a single European approach that is still delivered in a local language with a local feel and makes people feel like they're part of a bigger conversation. But I think the, the real challenge to this is, is not so much designing deliberative and participative processes, which has been worked on for some time and actually there's been some really excellent European research on this. It's actually trying to build the governance structures that can make these longer term conversations really work. It's easy to hold a single event, it's easy to hold a single series of events, but the real challenge is to turn them into long-term conversations. And one of the things that really excites me about the, the missions and Horizon Europe more generally is that commitment to bringing citizens in right the way along the track through multiple years. But to do that, there will need to be more thinking and more experimentation about how that can work. And the most critical part of it is demonstrating to citizens that their views have been heard showing that they are part of the decision-making process. I don't think anyone expects that they should have the final word in these kind of processes, because obviously everyone knows that you know, the council, the parliament, and all of the other institutions need to make their calls. But at the same time, citizens are a different sort of stakeholder, and they can produce, as you saw from the words that came up on the screen, all sorts of different insights, different ideas, and 
testimony from the places where they're living their lives, which you know, sometimes can be a bit hard to, hard to source when you're in Brussels or when you're an MEP working with a massive constituency. So I think there's an enormous amount of potential in building this more widely. Things like the Conference on the Future of Europe give the opportunity to really build and strengthen a network, not just of participation and participation organisations, but of you know, deliberative and participative democracy that really connects into European national and local processes in a networked way. Well, excellent. Many thanks, Anthony, for sharing your views. And clearly, I, I can also uh, really underline that this is our commitment to have really a long-term commitment to citizen engagement in the missions and in the policy area as such. But now I'd like to turn to Maria uh, uh, de Grasa Garvalho, uh, who is joining us also online. And uh, first, could you also please tell us about your involvement and views in working with citizens and the missions? Good afternoon to all. Uh, first, I would like to thank the kind invitation to participate in a very interesting debate. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to be here to discuss with you the missions and their co-designs and the implementation with citizens. Um, Horizon missions are a, a very interesting and ambitious approach uh, to some of the greatest challenges that we have in front of us today, such as climate change, organization of the cities, health uh, with an emphasis on cancer, uh, just to mention some. Uh, many recommendations that have been put forward by the board of the missions and the assembly members are already having an impact. Uh, I would say that where we still can improve, uh, in my view, is precisely in the dimension of the citizens' involvement as far as the individual citizens. We can and we have also been successful to in involve institutions, organizations of citizens, but the individual one that is around Europe is, uh, should be our, also our target, that they are more involved in missions, as they should be more involved in all the European uh, discussions and participation. It's the same kind of, uh, of problematic, how to involve people in our discussions. Uh, yes, we have uh, many experts. We have the critical mass in the missions. We have consulted a, a lot of organizations, done a lot of uh, hearings. Uh, therefore, uh, I'm very convinced that the individual citizens should play a, a, a much bigger role uh, in the activities that we do in general in the European Parliament, the European Commission and special here in the missions that have been designed exactly to fulfill uh, that role of bringing the, the building a bridge between science and the, the, the citizens. So they need to, to be heard more, they deserve to be much better informed and um, what is going on in each field. One thing that uh, I know from my personal experience and is a recommendation is that the initiatives that work best were the, are the ones that involved media coverage. And I'm talking about the traditional media and also the, 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 the social networks. So uh, radio, television, uh, to use all the, the influence, the digital influences, to, to, to use digital, um, the social media in order to arrive to the, to the young people, to the individual citizens that they discuss about what we are doing. Uh, of course, it's important to organize, like the Commission has been doing and do, does very well, information sessions, debates open to the public. But we need to go a step further. The, mission, the missions need to capture the attention of the individuals in all the, the member states. And we can uh, have the help of the media and the social networks to do that, to deliver the message. So. Three, to conclude, three words, transparency, openness, engagement. And not only on the organized movements, 
and that is very important. We should not target only the organized ones. These are key ingredients to fulfill the original philosophy of the nations. Uh, and if they are uh, applied and they are successful, uh, we will have a much better chances uh, to solve this big challenge that we have in front of us. Thank you. Uh, well, many, many thanks, um, uh, Grasa, for sharing your th thoughts with us on this. And my second question is ac actually based on the experience that we've already had uh, in these missions, namely uh, an important number of services in the European Commission uh, working on research and innovation, actually up to 15 different services, uh, coordinate, uh, coordinated and launched uh, these pilot actions where citizens could collect their views. And we've seen that mission board members, uh, now as Pascal Lamy has also demonstrated, were very responsive, that these activities uh, also covered a number of uh, EU member states uh, geographically, and also uh, the members of the European Parliament were very active, uh, especially active uh, clearly in the member states they are coming from. So as you mentioned, uh, clearly the intention is that it's not something which will remain in the, uh, in the uh, EU policy area, but something which will spread also to the member states and uh, to, the, uh, to the regions. Uh, so uh, as a former minister and a member of the European Parliament, uh, how can I make sure in your view that really citizens' voices are drawn into policy priorities, also into the programme uh, design. Uh, any advice how we can turn these uh, mission targets also national and uh, local targets? And it would be also interesting if you very briefly touch upon the Conference on the Future of Europe. Uh, thank you very much for the very challenged questions. And uh, in fact, the, the, the missions uh, are not easy to implement. You have many uh, things that you have to overcome. First, the, the, the fact that they are multidisciplinary and you have to have a, uh, an horizontal and holistic approach in, inside uh, the, 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 the service of the European Commission is one challenge that you, you need to, 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 to overcome. Uh, the second is that the application uh, is uh, um, in the member states and many times in the region, in the region, and this is also uh, uh, poses some of the questions because uh, research uh, um, and the science it should be done at the European level and at a global level, but its application should be local as much as possible. And this is true in all our missions, take the cancer. We really need to, to advance in solutions for cancer. We need to cooperate at the level. We need to have big consortiums of the best type working together, putting data together. But after, you need to, uh, what the results of this research need to be applied and you need to involve the local institutions, the regional institutions. And you need to go and to uh, reach the uh, organization of doctors, of nurses, of the patient organization in each member state and in each region. So you have different levels, geographical levels, you are and, uh, dealing with uh, at, uh, uh, in the mission. And the same, uh, for example, in the cities. Uh, in the cities, you have many problems like the climate change that should be tackled globally. And a lot of this research is, is, is done in, in cooperation, even out, uh, with partners outside. But when you need to apply, it, you need to apply to our day-to-day -day life, in the organization of our communities, of our village, of our uh, cities. Uh, and you need to make sure that uh, the, the, the rules and the best practices are applied. And for that, uh, network is very important. Uh, and fortunately, the European Union has already in place many of these networks, like uh, the Covenant of Mayors, where thousands of mayors are uh, committed 
and uh, work together um, uh, to for their city uh, to apply the best practice in terms of, of climate. So this is another uh, important feature of these missions. Have global solutions that are applied local, applied local and together with the people. So many uh, difficult issues that uh, in the application of uh, these uh, these missions, but uh, in 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 my experience, uh, you you need to have all this presence, global research, application, a lot of contacts with the member states and the regions and their institutions, and not to forget the individual citizens through media, through social media, and to involve them all in order to pass the message and to get not only in one sense to pass the message but to get their response and to incorporate their response in what uh, uh, in, is being doing uh, in each mission. Fortunately, the uh, um, ICT, the information technologies, the digitalization can help us a lot and we can use these new tools, these new platforms for uh, uh, citizens' participation in order to improve uh, this communication between the different levels of uh, work and different levels of governance with the, 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 the citizens. And there we can also do more. We can use much more these new uh, big data, digital applications, platforms uh, and all the tools that merge everything, all these levels of, go of governance in order that we have everything involved, the European, the, the member states, the region, and the organizations and in the individual uh, citizens all participating, all receiving information, but also giving information, uh, giving their uh, opinion, giving uh, their ideas and to contribute for the success of each of these uh, missions. Now, many, many thanks, Krasa Garvalho. Uh, we are, uh, well, running out of time. We may have just time for one question. So if you're quick enough, you can put your questions. No, I'm sure that we don't have time for that anymore. Um, uh, then I'd really like to thank all uh, the panelists uh, for this exciting session. And let me wrap up and conclude uh, this really uh, interesting exchanges on the challenges uh, of co-designing uh, European Union's policy with the general public and bringing citizens' ideas into practice. Well, we have focused here on the European Union's missions, what the Horizon Europe programmes will do in order to support these, and how these address citizens' problems and impact their real lives. We've heard about the emotional importance of emotional connection with the citizens, and I think this is relevant not only for this policy area, but also other policy areas. We've reflected uh, on how citizen inputs are shaping mission, missions design and how citizens can be involved in achieving missions targets. Currently, citizen inputs are being taken into account for the definition of specific missions. And as we've heard, they've actually guided uh, the, uh, uh, the names of these uh, missions for the mission boards. Uh, you can also expect Commission's communication on EU missions uh, in December this year, which will also take into account citizens' proposals for specific targets in these areas, and also how citizens will be able to be part of the solution. I think this is most important. This is an ex excellent example of involvement of those who actually should benefit from these policies. But really, we need to go beyond this excellent example. First, we have seen that citizen in engagement is not a one-off activity. This is a process. This is a continuous activity. 
citizen involvement should be continued to be promoted at all stages of policymaking, from design to implementation and monitoring. Second, citizens should be promoted in all levels of administration in the European Union, also in the member states and at local level. And third, citizen engagement should be promoted in all EU policy areas. I'm confident that the Conference on the Future of Europe will also abound in this sense. Many, many thanks to all the speakers and also 